Hi guys, Apron here. Um, it's been about a week since I made the Pac-Man uh, tutorial, but uh, as I promised, here comes the uh, two-dimensional, the 2D side-scroller game. So this would be all your favorites like Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, I'm using Visual Basic 6.0. I'm going to stick to the same rules that I had before uh, for myself. I'm only going to use code that I know offhand. So you know, you guys sitting at home, you don't have to worry about me pasting in code from some other source that you don't have. Um, I'm also not going to use any tools or import anything that you wouldn't have if you were sitting on a normal machine with Visual Basic 6.0. I'm only going to use paint for the um, the sprites and the graphics. Um, my thoughts on that are if you can do it in paint, you can do it in anything. It's only going to get better. So uh, I don't want to confuse people. I wouldn't want to sit down and do sprites in 3D Studio Max or something and lose half the people watching the video because they would have no idea where to start if they didn't have those tools. So here we go. Um, with the last video, the uh, Pac-Man video, one second, I've got to turn on my timer here. Forgot about it. And my screen's all weird. So like eight minutes or so. Okay, uh, with the Pac-Man video, <clears throat> I pretty much did the whole thing in one sitting. I did a uh, stop, fell asleep for a little while in the middle. <laughs> but uh, this one is probably going to be a little more complicated, so I might end up breaking this up over at least between today and tomorrow. Um, if that ends up being the case, uh, hopefully it doesn't get too confusing. You know, I don't hopefully forget what I've coded. So... Um, to save time, like I did with the Pac-Man video, I started working on sprites ahead of time. Or I, actually, I pulled sprites I had done for something else and then start, sort of modified it to fit these needs. You're going to be able to take as much time as you need to make your own sprites, or I'm going to have a link to these sprites. Um, I'll come up with an address for this later, but um, you're probably going to want something to start with so that you can start with the coding and then always go back and make your own sprites later. So I'm going to... whatever. I produce here with the sprite sheets, I'm going to stick online and then give you guys a link. Um, as you can see, it's a lot of gibberish, a lot of pieces. Um, for those of you who have no sprite making ability, um, there's a lot of people who know a lot more than I do as far as the artwork, so you guys can just, you know, put your heads down, take a nap for a minute. Um, for the rest of you, if you're building sprites and you make something that looks good, let's say a head, a hand, an arm, anything, always cut it apart and save a copy of it so that you can keep pulling it back in. Um, like the bad guy here, which was the last one I put together. First thing I made was this top half, then you have to go back through, cut the head off and separate it, cut the arm off and separate it, figure out what would the, t the body itself look like without the head and the arm. That way as you're doing the rest of the animations you can start with these individual pieces, kind of put everything back together. It makes everything a lot easier. And then when you're putting your sprites into a box, which I tend to do, uh, again for me it's a stretched rectangle because I'm on a laptop and everything's size funny, but um, I usually make a box where the inside is the size of the, uh, the tile. Um, always take something like a foot, um, you can see on these guys better, take a foot and make sure that that foot is in the same spot on each of the animations. That way when the person is standing still and they're swinging around, they don't like jiggle side to side because you didn't put them in exactly the right spot on each tile. So always give yourself something as kind of an anchor. Okay, naps over for those of you who I told to put your heads down. Uh, from all this mess, I came up with a few sprite sheets here. I'm going to open those. Um, this here was the result of the little character I did. Um, and let me kind of walk you through what we've got. We have a standing standing still. Again, later after you're done with this tutorial and you want to go back and make things more complicated, you could have him animate you know, when he stands still, maybe it could look like he's breathing or something, but for this um, one image if he's standing still um, a total of four animations if he's running uh, this is when he's about to jump in the air and coming down uh, ducking, which I don't know if we're going to use or not but I have it. Two animations for swinging his sword two for getting hit, two for if he's climbing a ladder, and then three for if he's shooting lasers out of his sword. I was going to give him a bow and arrow or something because I figured 
there should be some sort of a ranged attack. Uh, if only for the tutorial so you guys know how to code that. But uh, I started thinking about all the extra work it's going to take to put a bow and arrow on the guy, so I just did the whole Zelda thing and his sword and shoot lasers. So we have that. Um, the masks here, you guys remember that from the Pac-Man video. I'm hoping that you have gone through the Pac-Man tutorial before this one. Um, I'm not going to reference any of the code from it. Like I'm not going to tell you I'll pull whatever code that we used in the Pac-Man one. But I may explain something and then say this is like such and such from the Pac-Man game. So that if you've gone through the Pac-Man game, hopefully you'll gain a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So these masks, which you'll this is for transparency, and in the Pac-Man game it explains those. Um, these can be a bit annoying to generate if you don't know what you're doing. Um, in the Pac-Man game, things are simple enough that you could easily just color in the stuff, you know, make a copy, color it in black, and you'd be set. But with these guys, they're a little bit more complicated, and because we are limited... Let me open up one of the others while I'm thinking about it. I've got, um... Here's the bad guy. Here is the laser that comes out of the sword, and the laser that the bad guy shoots, or magic, whatever it would be. And then here are my actual tiles that the map will be made out of. But because we're limited to only paint, um it is necessary to come up with some other tools. So I thought one of the easiest things to make those masks would be just to quickly code um, a tool for maps or uh, masks. So let's do this real quick. We'll open up VB standard. Um, uh, just like in the Pac-Man video, we start off by changing our scale mode to pixel. I'm going to make picture, scale mode to pixel, I'm going to say appearance is flat, auto redraw true, auto size is true, and border style is none, and make one button. This is all we're going to need as far as that's concerned. Um, I'm going to grab a picture, or whatever I need. I'm actually going to just do this to start off. This is cheating, but uh, as you guys, let's say that this was your sprite sheet. You didn't have the bottom half. I'm going to cut this, paste it in. Now, code for the button, all we say is um, picture one dot four color equals zero. That happens to be the color black. Um, it's for those of you who don't know, it's RGB color system, and there's two hundred and fifty six possible values for each of those for red, green, and blue. And it's every com a combination of that determines your color. Everything from zero to two fifty five. So if you have a base two fifty six number system and you convert it to base ten. Uh, if, hopefully I don't lose any of you guys. The the maximum number would be one six seven 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 two one five. That happens to be white. Now VB is nice because you could just type VB white, and it does the same thing. So we're gonna say uh, that'll mean something later. We set the four color equal to black. We say four uh, Z equals zero to picture one dot width. Um, actually should be minus one, but I'm not even gonna bother to explain why. It doesn't. It, this won't hurt it. For z equals zero, or for w equals zero to picture one dot height. Hopefully, you guys realize that what this would do is loop through every single spot on that picture, and we say if picture one dot point z w does not equal v b white. So any spot that is not white, then picture one dot p set z w. Now here's what that does. We push the button, boom. Everything that was what that was not white turns to black. Now you see his eyes and stuff are messed up. I mean you can still see those. The reason being um, his eyes were white. Now that's poor planning on my part if I was going to save it with a white background. Because you should never have this a color on your guy the same color as the background. It just makes things complicated. I should have used a very light gray or something so light that you thought it was white. Let me save the video and come back. I don't want the audio to get out of sync. Uh, 